Comas are the largest part of Big Boss's life. He spent nine years in one during the 70s and 80s, then 15 years in another one after Metal Gear 2. The wheels are in motion. Your enemies are everywhere. We must alter your appearance immediately. This plot twist stops making sense right here if you give it any thought. Venom Snake is Big Boss's body double, giving hypnotherapy to make him believe he is Big Boss in order to protect the real one. So why wouldn't the doctors working for Ocelot already have altered Venom Snake's appearance look like Big Boss before Venom Snake awoke from his coma? And the doctor is suggesting cosmetic surgery to make Venom Snake look different so no one would recognize him as Big Boss, which would completely destroy the plan of him assuming Big Boss's identity. I actually don't mind Kiefer Sutherland being the new Snake as much as other people do. I just wish he would have been given some actual lines to prove himself. Snake hardly speaks in this game. He is almost a silent protagonist, and Snake has always been a chatty person. So all of the most memorable lines still belong to David Hayter's interpretation of Snake. I went ahead and made my Venom Snake pretty hard to alter to look like Big Boss with plastic surgery, thereby increasing the sin strength later. The photo the doctor holds up could potentially reveal to Venom Snake that he isn't Big Boss. The doctor even said he has to forget who he is, so why keep reminding him? Ishmael saw Quiet come in, said nothing while she killed the nurse and doctor, and only acted once she moved to kill Venom Snake. I'll just slowly take my time pulling the trigger like I'm not waiting for someone to tackle me from off camera. I have to wonder what film directors of the past would think about modern directors treating film errors like lens flare and chromatic aberration that they worked hard to avoid in their shots as good things to be done intentionally. Who are you? Who am I? You're talking to yourself. Ishmael is the real Big Boss. I know. Big surprise and all since he's also voiced by Kiefer Sutherland. What are the odds that Big Boss and his body double would awaken from comas at almost the exact same time? Kojima must have been proud about that microwave hallway in Metal Gear Solid 4, since he makes you crawl on the floor about as long here. The man on fire is Vulgan, who for some reason was being kept in his brain-dead state here in this hospital on Cyprus instead of back in the USSR. Coincidentally, the same hospital Big Boss and Venom Snake were being kept at. He awakened in part due to the real Big Boss also awakening, and young Psycho Mantis possesses him and moves him around. Despite all that, he constantly goes after Big Boss's body double instead of the real one. I have no idea why Psycho Mantis involves himself with this. Kojima does stuff because he wants to and creates an explanation later. I'm not sure where this patient came from who grabbed Snake's leg. The XOF soldier killed a nurse, then left the room through the hallway this guy would have crawled through to get here. He would have walked right past the patient crawling on the floor. A stairwell door should not be as difficult to close as a bank vault. Someone should have mentioned to Soldier B that this was a raid on a hospital. The guy brought an RPG with him for indoors black ops work. These soldiers were really thorough at making sure the bodies were dead until they reached Big Boss and Snake, the only two bodies lying on the floor who weren't covered in blood. It may not be actual urine this time, but it's still Kojima's brand of comedy and possible fetish. Would the hospital have left Vulgan in his uniform from Metal Gear Solid 3 with all the bullets still sticking out of him? Making someone weak against water makes him incredibly easy to beat, especially when it should be bleeding obvious to everyone. I'm not even joking when I say you can beat him with a squirt gun. Back in Metal Gear Solid, Psycho Mantis didn't actually have the ability to teleport. He simply used optic camo and pretended to. In this game, he actually can teleport all over the place. In fact, I'd say Psycho Mantis was way more powerful as a kid. XOF just so happened to cross paths with Vulgan and Mantis at the hospital where both were trying to kill Snake. After this, Vulgan and Mantis work with XOF under Skullface's command for seemingly no reason. Vulgan is a brain-dead Terminator kept alive by his hatred of Snake and animated by Mantis. How could you ever convince these two to work with you? How did the fire trucks of Vulgan yeeted into the sky get to the hospital of XOF as the road leading there blockaded? Snake will never ask or think about Ishmael, the man who got him out of the hospital alive and disappeared after the car crash. I guess Vulgan was down with the Moby Dick naming scheme too, since he conjures a giant flaming whale for no reason. Get on! I'm on your side! I like Troy Baker, but his Ocelot is the worst interpretation of the character. It doesn't even feel like Ocelot. Ocelot is the man who once said there is no such thing as a supernatural. Here he is being chased by a burning man riding a unicorn while being controlled by a psychic child. Psycho Mantis controls Vulgan and feeds off his hatred of Big Boss. But Psycho Mantis can read minds, so he should know which of the two were the real Big Boss. Yet he always sends Vulgan after a Venom Snake. If Psycho Mantis ever spoke, I might understand why he takes an interest in any of this. That goes for the rest of the cast as well. Snake rarely speaks, Quiet doesn't talk until the very end, Vulgan and Mantis never say a word, and Eli only has a few lines. 90% of the dialogue in this game belongs to Miller and Ocelot. Ocelot does not use a single action army revolver in this game. Considering Konami licensed so much music and cast Kiefer Sutherland, you would think a classic gun wouldn't be too great an expense. You remember? Your partner nine years ago, Kazuhira Miller. Nine years back, your private army came under attack by sight. Do you remember, Snake? Maybe paying for Ground Zeroes was something you blocked from your memory. Our seven days to Port Kasim, 
Another three over land. So we won't have much time once we're there. Which means that Snake has just 10 days to get his atrophied body back into prime fighting shape after 9 years of being in a coma and learn to use a prosthetic arm. Good luck with that. What was the plan to rescue Miller if Snake hadn't awoken from his coma? Miller has an entire base full of mercenaries. Were none of them going to launch a rescue mission? The iDroid can display holograms, scan documents, manage base operations, place orders for weapons and research, dictate landing zones and targets, and activate e-cigars. But if Snake wants to play some music, he needs to use a Walkman. I suppose Sunglass's product placement is a step up from MGS4. They might have given Snake an Apple II to carry around instead of the iDroid. While I do speak Russian, don't expect me to do your interpreting. Ocelot has spent most of his life living and working within the Soviet Union, but the game pulls some BS in order to get you to capture a Russian interpreter first. What took you so long? Kojima had to spend a couple of years developing the Fox engine first. Yeah. I remember it all. This is the point in the game where Miller flashes back to the events of nine years ago that put Snake in a coma. I'm pretty confident this is where you would have played through the events of Ground Zeroes had it not been spun out into its own game. So I'm going to do just that. That's right. This is now a Sin Video double feature. But only because Konami cut it from the game so they could sell it to you separately. Just call it Guantanamo Bay. It's a US military black site situated inside Cuba. There's only one of those. I have a lot of criticisms about MGS5, but one thing I can appreciate is the cinematography. Kojima did a great job utilizing one-take camera shots. If you are wondering who Chico and Paz are, this is another case of important characters being introduced in a handheld game you are expected to play. If there is one thing I am very happy about, it's that we no longer have to worry about handheld spin-off games being tied into the main plot now that the Nintendo Switch exists and Sony has no interest in handhelds anymore. If you're wondering who this G.I. Joe villain is and what he's doing here, he's the most boring villain in the series. Skullface has no real connection to anything or anyone. He just popped up out of nowhere to be the villain. It would have made way more sense to have Zero be the villain in this game due to his actual importance to the series. Maybe it's a detail buried in the cassette tapes I never bothered listening to, but I have no idea why Chico keeps his headphone jack plugged into his chest. Pictured here is what every weeb imagines himself doing in that upcoming Area 51 raid. Pictured here is what the result would be for anyone attempting said raid. Chico, where is Paz? Skullface gave Chico a recording of Paz's supposed death. The problem is that Skullface needs Big Boss to rescue Paz for his trap to work. What if Snake had believed Chico in the tape and took off without finding her first? Chico left his Walkman recording once when he was transferred from the detention area to where Paz was being held for more torture, allowing Snake to use the recorded noises to locate Paz. The question I have is why would a secretive military black site committing war crimes allow a prisoner to carry a recording device on him? Medic! The medic is the one who becomes Venom Snake later. I don't really see how a combat medic ever had the kind of training to become someone as capable as Big Boss. No time for anesthetic. We have to open her now. No time for anesthetic? Shoot her with Snake's tranquilizer gun at the very least. The Cobra unit had micro bombs hidden inside of their bodies to take their enemy out with them. How come Skullface had to use a bomb this big that required removing several of Paz's organs just to make it fit? Sure, you could make the argument that he doesn't give a damn about Paz's well-being, but he knew this bomb would be so obvious that it would be removed that he had to place a second bomb inside Paz's uterus. Look! Commander Miller! Look, it's Commander Miller. And someone's OC from Metal Gear Survive. They played us like a damn fiddle! This is what I said after buying this game and discovering it takes less than an hour to beat. Don't you die on me, damn it. After the second bomb and side paws went off and caused Big Boss's chopper to crash into an XOF chopper, Big Boss, Miller, and the medic were somehow transferred to a hospital in Columbia. Miller was conscious while they resuscitated Big Boss, meaning he would have noticed if Big Boss lost his left arm and had shrapnel sticking out of his head after the accident. He never questions why Big Boss lost a perfectly good arm and has a horn nine years later. The very same injuries the medic had after the crash. Our new mother base. I think the overhead costs of building and maintaining an ocean platform would make it hard to turn a profit for a mercenary company. Start bringing people in. Use this. It's a Fulton recovery device. The Fulton recovery system works by floating a balloon in the air attached to a cable. Then a plane, such as a C-130, catches the cable and pulls the person it's attached to off the ground and into the air. The balloon never actually lifts the person into the air. And Diamond Dogs doesn't even have an aircraft capable of Fulton recovery. I would let this slide due to it being a cool gameplay mechanic, but MGS3 was the first to mention Fulton recovery and described it accurately back then. Snake grows the ranks of Diamond Dogs by Fultoning enemy soldiers from the battlefield, and without fail, Every single one of them proves willing to leave behind their duty, their nation, and families to live as a mercenary at sea. Now select cardboard box and start development. It requires money and research to develop a cardboard box. I mean, for crying out loud, they deliver Snake's box inside another box. Looking at all these posters put up around Motherbase, 
and it's clear Snake has recruited a bunch of weebs. Here's where the real problem with sinning this game begins. Kojima seems to have taken the criticism that MGS4 had too many lengthy cutscenes to heart, but then went and overcorrected, because this game is incredibly sparse on both cutscenes and plot. I already mentioned that most of the cast rarely speak, but most of the game is just Snake going on missions that are only vaguely connected to anything going on in the plot, and much of the backstory and explanations are told to you through cassette tapes the game expects you to listen to. You look well rested, big boss. How you've changed. You became a demon for such little weapons as that. Skullface didn't know Snake would come here on a mission to retrieve a rocket launcher for the CIA, but he showed up in full force with a Metal Gear in the Skull unit expecting it. Either that or he just really wanted that rocket launcher for himself. Rest in peace this time. Skullface sent an entire task force to Cyprus to kill Big Boss just 10 days ago. Now here he has him, helpless in the grasp of a Metal Gear and doesn't kill him, but drops him so the Skulls can do it instead. The Skulls can release parasites into the air that infect humans and turn them into what are pretty much zombies, except Snake is never affected by it despite being exposed to the same mist. The Skull unit make up most of the boss battles in MGS5. Every Metal Gear Solid game has seen the personality and character of the bosses degrade, and this is the final result. Personality-free super soldiers who have nothing but a creep factor. This seems like a poor choice of location for a target range. What if someone comes around the corner while practice is in session? You see that in the movies? Says the guy who spins his revolver around needlessly to show off. Well, not in this game. Troy Baker apparently couldn't pull off any of Ocelot's known mannerisms and body language. Once you build the medical platform, you gain access to Paz's hospital room. Paz clearly died in Ground Zeroes when the bomb and cider exploded and destroyed Big Boss's chopper. But Snake reinterprets what happened that day, so he discovered the second bomb and removed it before it exploded. This, of course, is all an hallucination inside his head, and I'm not sure what brought it about. Paz. That's right. It's her. What about the bomb? We were able to remove the explosives. This hallucination is so incredibly elaborate that Snake imagines Ocelot and Miller explaining it to him. Never mind the fact that the medical platform was just built, so they would have had nowhere to keep her before that. Also, you only get to speak with Paws when you bring back Mother Base soldiers who have been wandering the wilderness for nine years. Somehow they all ended up in Afghanistan and Africa when they were originally on an ocean platform in South American waters, and they all carry photos of Paws for some reason. Do all female patients get mini shorts and tube top hospital gowns here? Or just the ones living inside Venom Snake's head. Thanks, Kojima. I really wanted the image of a young girl being fisted to remove a bomb seared into my brain. The sniper battle against the end must have been lightning in a bottle, because Kojima has tried to recapture it in every game since with mixed results. After the final moments of the boss, why would you ever try to replicate it knowing it's just going to be a pale imitation? Kojima is a 15-year-old boy in a middle-aged man's body. Quiet escapes her cuffs and seemingly jumps out of the helicopter, but actually she cloaked herself and remained inside until a fighter jet attacks the chopper. Her mission is technically to kill Snake, and the game is incredibly poor at explaining on why she changed her mind. Don't lead it back to Mother Base. <laughs> Roger, we'll shake it off. You're going to shake off a jet fighter while over open water in a chopper? Quiet's rifle somehow ended up inside the chopper even though Snake didn't put it on the chopper with her. It was made clear Quiet can get out of cuffs any moment she likes. Putting them back on isn't reassuring. Kojima had a hard time picking what the parasites do to people they infect, so he simply went with all of them. Quiet's parasites let her turn invisible, breathe through her skin, and photosynthesize for energy. That's the opposite direction of the medical platform where Quiet's cell is located. When the time comes, I'll pull the trigger. Kojima should really focus on making trailers for games that he never plans to release, because those are truthfully the best part of the experience. Otacon has talked about his family's dark history of developing nuclear weapons, but he never once mentioned his father Huey designing Metal Gears. I can't think of a worse place to build a secret development program for a nuclear-armed bipedal robot than Afghanistan. The country has no infrastructure, no resources, hostile terrain and culture, and it's a war zone. Let's pray that Kojima got this joke out of his system with this game. Are you... Dr. Emmerich. Snake? It's so weird that Kojima kept Christopher Randolph around to play the voice of Otacon's father, Huey, but not David Hayter to play Big Boss. I don't think there is a soldier alive that you could convince to use a walker gear in combat due to how exposed your back would be. Skullface would have been killed when Sahalanthropus fell from the sky while holding him in its hand. Impossible! It can't be active! If Psycho Mantis can control a supposedly unpilotable Metal Gear due to its design, how come he never volunteered to control Rex and Shadow Moses? Would have saved a lot of trouble had he used his abilities for that one. This is just like one of my son's Japanese anime. It never gets old, does it? Miller was in contact with Cypher nine years ago. He was working with them. Huey isn't wrong, but the game completely glosses over Miller's connections to Cypher. Why would you design your exoskeleton legs to bend that far in the wrong direction? Take a listen to this later. 
I mean, I could just tell you right now, but Kiefer charges by the word, so we can't risk a conversation. Cypher is pursuing new research in Africa. Why follow Skullface to Africa when you know Sahelanthropus is still here in Afghanistan? A weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Meaning it's not just another nuke. He doesn't say the thing he's known for saying. The oil runs to the pipeline from that facility. Taking it out should end the leak. The client this time is an environmental NGO. Destroy the facility. Destroying the refinery is going to cause a much bigger environmental disaster than any leak. Not to mention devastate the local economy. She never speaks, sweats, or breathes. What? Well, not with lungs, at least. She breathes through her skin. Kojima promised us we would cry when we discovered the reason why Quiet wears practically no clothes. Oh, just look at this river of tears I'm shedding. Clothing would suffocate her. Quiet is infected with the same parasites that the Inn was infected with, but the Inn wore clothes and only exposed his head. Turns out your ability to breathe through your clothing is proportional to how attractive you are. If Big Boss were smart, he would bottle and sell Quiet's bathwater. Kojima licensed nearly every major music hit from the 80s for this game, but he couldn't license Happy Birthday to you. Quiet opens up a crate of cigars with automatic fire, but she's using a single fire rifle with a relatively small magazine. In this mission, a warlord hires Snake to kill five of his men who turn out to be children, but you can also recruit all the soldiers who are keeping the kids locked up, which I have to assume makes for some awkward scenarios back at Mother Base when the kids run into them. These kids are gonna have a bright future making Nike shoes. Snake can't Fulton children since the shock might kill them. He had no problem Fultoning a Wolf puppy back to Mother Base, though. It's a variable, multi-legged tank. A spin-off of Metal Gear technology. The Battle Gear was cut from the final game due to it being overpowered, so Snake never gets to use it. Normally, when content gets cut from a game, the devs remove all elements of it. Kojima left all the cutscenes in because, damn it, he paid for Kiefer Sutherland, and that guy only put in a weekend of mocap. And this was one of those scenes. <laughs> You're looking at the Apple Airbud testing process. So does Skullface personally finish off all the test subjects himself? There's really no reason for him to be here. How does a guy who is on fire inside a dark room sneak up on you? Can Miller get these kids some better clothes? There had to be a losing Super Bowl team's merch to pick from. Hold on a minute. When Snake arrived in Africa, he had to recruit another interpreter for the local languages. Now he speaks it himself just fine. Even Liquid, someone who loves the sound of his own voice, barely speaks in this game. Words are pretty important in the storytelling process. And ironically, this game's plot is all about language and communication. This game lets me beat children. Careful now, that right arm is at an important plot point later. Cut it out, kid, that ain't a toy. Eli. Don't call me that! Why is everyone calling him Eli? He never mentioned that name himself, nor did anyone else, and he clearly hates it. I wonder why Liquid never recalled knowing Ocelot while he was a kid. He might not have trusted him as Shadow Moses, had he? On the battlefield, they use one another's nom de guerre. But here, we insist they use their real names. That's a strange rule to have, considering everyone on staff at Mother Base goes by a code name except for Miller. Instead of acting like a psychopath and trying to cut out this soldier's tongue, Quiet could have written a note explaining the situation. She knows everything about the vocal cord parasite, but doesn't even write a report about it once Mother Base becomes infected, allowing many people to die before Snake discovers the truth and how to stop it. Maybe going through personnel files and finding every single member of Mother Base who speaks Kikongo and quarantining them sounded good on paper, but in reality it's 30 minutes of clicking through menus when you have no villain characters to develop. It gives you time to focus on what really matters. The Skull Unit can create weapons from the metallic archaea inside their bodies. I could buy that if they were creating simple weapons like blades, but they can even create advanced electronics like thermal scopes. The Skull Sniper Unit is basically a repeat of the Sniper Duel with Quiet, which in itself was a repeat of the infight. After you complete this mission, you gain the ability to create a Parasite Suit that can use the same powers the Skulls have, as long as you power it with Parasites taken from captured Skulls, who never appear in the game again, meaning you have to farm Parasites by redoing missions like this and earlier ones. Code Talker is a 100-year-old Native American shaman slash nuclear physicist slash biologist. You can make a compelling character out of any of those traits, but somehow they manage to make him the most bland and tired Native American stereotype possible. They even do the candle trick and give him a peace pipe. It's infecting my men. How do we- Silence. Or death. What do you- It could be in here. Snake already spoke English. If he were infected with a parasite activated by that language, he would already be dying. Stay quiet. Your life depends on it. 
That shouldn't be a problem. Snake hardly ever speaks anyway. They attack only those who speak a certain language. So if the vocal cord parasite kills based on the language it is attuned with, how does it tell the difference in homonyms like we and we? In fact, how does it account for an evolving dictionary, slang, ubonics, and loan words? How would a parasite know what language a word like Pokemon belongs to? I'm pretty sure the pilot could have avoided flying right into the obvious cloud of unknown gas. If metallic archaea causes metal to instantly oxidize, how come Snake's prosthetic arm and weapons are not affected? Not only do you fight the Skull Unit once again, you fight them in the very same airport you fought them at the last time. He plans to avoid detection by exporting minerals containing tiny amounts of uranium in the form of metallic archaea. Once on site, the metallic archaea Enrich the uranium and weaponize it. Even with enriched uranium created by the metallic archaea, you still would need a lot of sophisticated technology to weaponize it into a nuclear bomb. Loaded onto all terrain bipedal machines, they ensure any country, armed group, even the smallest terrorist cell, can become a nuclear power. This is the same exact dumb plan Vulgan tried to pull off, only even more ridiculous. A giant robot isn't cheap, nor easy to manufacture in quantity and maintain it on a battlefield. And the only way Skullface can even use the first one is because he has a little psychic boy controlling it. Another metallic archaea instantly overrides the criticality generator. It fails safe only he controls. Any such weapon can be deactivated whenever he chooses then nobody would ever buy one. Why does Kojima continue to think people would want weapons that can be turned off by someone else? Wouldn't the metallic Archaea also rust that needle? What are those legs made of? Titanium? All the way to the femur. Titanium is largely rust-proof, though. Okay, B-0! This philanthropist is beyond the Soviet base camp! in a lab built by the Soviet philosophers. What a surprise. Saw Lanthropus is located in the base where Snake first saw it, almost like it was being developed there or something. I'm gonna need backup on this one. And by that, I mean I want you to fly around pointlessly in a helicopter above all the fighting I'll be doing. Eli snuck on board the helicopter to try and escape Mother Base, but where could he possibly hide inside the cabin? You, me, we've no place to run, nowhere to hide. That is why I'll show you my demon. I'll stop trying to kill you and drive you to the very heart of my operation. Even Cobra Commander would be calling Skullface an idiot. Why not take the helicopter Skullface was about to board instead of a jeep? Let's go along with him for now. We're ready to fight if it comes to that. That's our leverage against him, our deterrent. He doesn't want a war on his hands. He doesn't want a war, and being ready to fight as a deterrent? He's been trying to kill all of you for a while now, and he has the complete advantage. I've known you since your time at Langley. I've long been the other side of your coin. 1964, Soviet territory. Vox's first mission. Any mess you made, I was there to clean up. You can't just drop your new villain into the game and claim his footsteps were there beside you the whole time. This is simply trying to add importance to a villain who hasn't earned it. The final parasite. It knows English. An English strain of the vocal parasite. I will exterminate the English language. You have to wonder why XOF is so loyal to Skullface. After all, it's staff with Americans who all speak English, meaning they die if he ever releases the English strain of the parasite. People will suffer, of course. A phantom pain. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a subtitle. It sure would have been great if we had been able to understand Psycho Mantis at all during this game. Then scenes like this where he abandons Vulgan for Eli would make some sense. Psycho Mantis allows Eli to telepathically control Sahelanthropus, which seems like it would weird Eli out since he has no knowledge of psychic powers or how to control a walking robot. But I bet he wishes he remembered this 20 years from now, since he could have activated Rex a lot easier. Why give it a penis? Sahelanthropus is way more advanced than either Rex or Ray that were built 20 years later with more advanced technology. If the world finds out about Sahelanthropus, Skullface will have won. His plans will become reality. He won't even need to use nukes. That thing's mere existence would be enough to enslave humanity to the fear of nuclear Armageddon. No they won't, without Skullface. Who is going to build and distribute more of these things and control the metallic archaea that can shut down the nuclear self-destruct inside each one? Nor can he release the English strain of the parasite. This is without a doubt the best Metal Gear fight in the series, so sin removed even though this is just a repeated boss fight from earlier. There were three. 
Where's the other? <laughs> That statement should really give away where the third English-speaking parasite is. It's not even subtle. Hey, it's this shot again. I counted 10 shots from that rifle without reloading. It doesn't strike me as a good idea to bring Sahalanthropus to Mother Base when they know it can turn itself into a nuclear bomb on command. And they know Skullface planned to have that control be remote. XOF and Cypher are still around. Who's to say they couldn't activate it? Doesn't feel like this is over. It should be. The second act of the game feels like it was cobbled together from the deleted scenes of a Blu-ray release. I'm sure Eli will understand what this is and how to use it. Then again, it never comes into play anyways outside of an unfinished cutscene that wasn't even released with the game. Watch the man to your left. To your right. Assume nothing. Report everything. Well, when you consider all these men have been randomly recruited from the Soviet Army and African PMCs without any kind of background check, you kind of brought this paranoia on yourself. This hallucination has gone on for weeks at this point, with Ocelot appearing in it again to update Snake on Paz's status. Wouldn't some of the mother base soldiers have noticed Snake going into an unfinished hospital room and talking to himself? What's going on? Shabani. Mayaka Nine Kingoya. Shabani. It's down there. The tank at the bottom is filled with chlorine disinfectant. One whiff and you'll suffocate. It's just a necklace. Wait for the gas leak to dissipate. That's nothing to risk your life over. I'm going to state something that might give people a reason to take everything I say from here on out with a grain of salt. I actually think Kojima is pretty good at writing female characters. Sure, his choice of camera angles often leave me feeling like a teenager trying to adjust my phone to take creep shots of women. But that's just the toll you pay to get characters like the boss, Eva, and others. But Quiet never lives up to those past examples despite Kojima promising us we would cry once we learn why this poor woman has to walk around nearly naked while keeping her mouth shut. We basically get all the tea and a, but none of the character depth. Very impressive. We will still never get to use it. Kojima used to cut unfinished content from his games, you know. Boss, we need evidence to prove our suspicions about Emmerich. Head to the central base camp in Afghanistan and recover that AI pod. Shouldn't you have confirmed your suspicions about Huey before letting him build you a battle gear and oversee the repairs of Sahel Anthropus? I was under the impression that the man on fire could only move when Mantis controlled him. And where did the horse come from? Snake came to this base to retrieve Volgan's body. There was no horse. Well, good to see that whole Volgan issue was resolved. What a waste of an idea. This scene is less sexy when you recall the fact that Quiet is basically a slug. The game runs out of missions to give you at this point, so it recycles previous missions and gives you a handicap. And the few remaining missions that are original still have you returning to places you've already been. Just because you got Kiefer Sutherland in your game doesn't mean you need as many interrogation scenes as 24. Who infected you with a parasite? You know that Skullface had three samples of the English strain of the vocal cord parasite. He said the third was close to you upon his death. You know Quiet is infected, and she refuses to say a single word. This isn't that hard of a puzzle to figure out. Also, what does it matter what strain she is infected with? Co-talker gave you the cure for it, the bacteria that changes the sex of the parasite so they can't create offspring. Just administer it to her. This was found adhered to your lungs. Intact. How did you get that flower petal out of her lungs without surgery? Let's not get in tea. Oh. Quiet can speak two different languages, English and Navajo. An odd combination for someone who isn't Native American. Us. Some of the kids we've been keeping here have escaped. The next few missions have Snake going out to rescue each one of the kids that somehow managed to escape a military base at sea and individually make their way to Central Africa and Afghanistan. Just look at all that character development. What was even the purpose of the pause hallucination? It adds nothing to the plot, develops no character, and is all around a boring set of fetch quests. With hindsight, you are supposed to be able to create prequels that don't introduce conflicts with older games. Why would Eli later go on to completely trust Ocelot after all this while not caring at all for Psycho Mantis who actually did everything for him? Goodbye, father. I don't need you anymore. This makes the second Metal Gear that's been stolen from Big Boss by a blonde haired kid, the first being Paws. And that's the end of Eli's part in the game. He flies away with the rest of the kids and Saul Anthropus, and Big Boss and the rest don't even seem to care that a psychotic kid is out there somewhere with a nuclear weapon. I mean, that should be pretty easy to follow. Something sweet. I can smell it even through the mask. Snake shouldn't be able to smell anything through a gas mask. Kind of defeats the purpose of wearing one. <laughs> Snake having to euthanize his own men infected with a mutated strain of the parasite is easily the best sequence in the game. It even emulates the first level, but this time Snake is the one going through a hospital killing people. 
considering every one of the infected soldiers in here was speaking English. You would think this would have something to do with Mantis giving Eli the last English strain, but no, it was Huey's doing. He leaked radiation into the building that caused a random mutation in the parasite. It should be noted that the definition of random is self-evident, but every single soldier on this platform developed the same random mutation. Yes, Kojima, you've seen Apocalypse Now. We're all very impressed. Mmm, gluten-free. We've reviewed into everything else that's happened since you arrived here. Please. Guilty! This doesn't strike me as a fair trial. Why even bother with a charade? You're right, he is not one of us. But we are not responsible to judge an enemy. Snake sure didn't feel that way when it came to Skullface. Quiet left Mother Base after the mutation incident, fearing her own parasites might mutate. Then she somehow got herself caught by the Soviets. She can escape handcuffs anytime she likes, yet these robes hold her just fine. Shouldn't Quiet be suffocating with all those clothes on? This wouldn't drown Quiet. She doesn't breathe through her lungs. And she takes water in through her skin as well. <laughs> What was the point of Kwai being captured and pushed around if she could have done this at any time she wanted? Snake didn't even need to rescue her. The battle against the Soviet tank division essentially serves as the final boss of the game. And damn does it suck. This would be an excellent time to put some of that field medicine Snake learned in NGS3 to use. Quiet is busted up from a tank round and Snake gets bitten by a cobra. Hey, Hap. I can't copy your transmission. Repeat. I bet Snake is really kicking himself for not urging R&D to add a text option to the iDroid. The boss is with me. Use Pig Latin, girl. Ethe osbe isye erahe. Earn te around ye. Quiet never stated that Snake had been bitten by a cobra, and she was unconscious when that happened, so it's unlikely that Pequod would have known what was wrong with him or what anti-venom to administer. Also, anti-venom for the Caspian Cobra is not very effective, so Snake would still be in danger of dying and would not be able to move around as if fully healed. Quiet just had a blank cassette tape on her. Where? No pockets on that outfit. I wanted to express my feelings to you. If only we shared a common tongue. Well, you could have written a note. Nothing like a quote from Nietzsche to let you know you're dealing with someone who thinks they're smarter than you. It all ends where it began cliché, literally in this case. You replay the prologue in its entirety, the long, slow prologue full of lying on a hospital bed, crawling on the floor, and game tutorials, with only two small differences in the entire sequence. This is you, as you've lived until this day. This is a really lazy plot twist, all things considered. What's the reason for why the photo and the plastic surgery scene are different this time? There isn't one. I'm going to change your appearance. We have no other choice. So to hide Venom Snake from the people who want Big Boss dead, the doctor made him look exactly like Big Boss, the guy everyone wants dead. And I thought Snake calling himself Pliskin in MGS2 was about as obvious as a homage Kojima could make to Escape from New York. You want to know how this game ruined the relationship between Ocelot and Big Boss? Ocelot was so devoted to Big Boss that he dedicated the back half of his life doing everything to free and revive him. But the two only briefly knew each other during the events of MGS3 and again briefly after Big Boss awoke from his own coma. Most of Ocelot's time was spent with Venom Snake. That's your name as of today. You best change your face too. Good luck with that one. This was supposed to be a few years later when Solid Snake is infiltrating Outer Heaven and ends up killing Big Boss. Only it was really Venom Snake thanks to this new cannon. You would think Solid Snake would have noticed that this Big Boss has a robotic hand and a piece of metal sticking out of his head. They played us like a damn fiddle!